Here's my Windows 7 machine, all set up. As you can see, it's running Windows 7 Enterprise. Now, your PC will probably be like this one, insofar as it'll have one big hard drive partition with the Windows in. So right-click Computer and select Manage. And go to Disk Management. And here you can see all the room on my drive is taken up. There's my C drive there. There's a little reserved partition in front of it. I need to worry about that. So to make things simpler later on, I'm going to right click that and select Properties and give it a sensible name. It is Windows 7, so I'm going to call it Windows 7 so I can identify it later. Click Apply. Click OK. Now I'm going to need to free up some room to install Windows 8 into. So if I right click that and select Shrink Volume that will give me the maximum amount that this volume can be shrunk. You see there it's highlighted in blue. Now, Windows 8 requires 20 gig of this space, so I'm going to put 40,000 in there, which will multiply out to about 39 gig. Now, there is some documentation that says that the 32 bit version needs 16 gig, but if you go for at least 20 gig, you'll have bags of room. So there's my now unallocated space, so I'm going to create a new volume in there. Accept all the defaults, click through at the end, and then I'm going to call this one Windows 8. Next, finish, and that will get formatted up. And after a few seconds, there we go. There's my volume ready to install Windows 8 into. Right, so let's close that down. All I simply need to do now is reboot this machine to start installing Windows 8. It's already got the Windows 8 DVD in, ready. So I'm simply going to restart the machine. Now to boot to DVD, you need to ensure that the CD-ROM stroke DVD drive is higher than the hard drive in the boot order in your machine's BIOS. Now that will differ from machine to machine, so Hopefully you should see this when you boot, and press any key to boot to the DVD. Now I want English United Kingdom, so click Next. Install now. A lot of this I've sped up. So the first thing it asks you for is your 25 character unlock code that in and click next and you need to accept the end user license agreement and click next now you want to click custom install and you will see here all the partitions including the one that I've set aside for Windows 8 now if you didn't name them you can use the size of them which is why it's never a good idea to make them exactly the same size otherwise you're going to confuse yourself click next now again, I've sped this up considerably. And it will reboot. Now ignore this for now, just let it do its default thing and boot into Windows 8. We'll come back to that in a minute. So this will spool up and continue installing Windows 8. Again I've sped this up. then it will reboot again. Again just leave it, don't press any key and eventually you'll be presented with this screen. Now click change defaults choose other options because you don't want it to boot to Windows 8 every time you're probably going to want it to boot to Windows 7 by default so 
select choose the default and then select Windows 7. You can change the timer out on here as well if you want to. But now we're going to continue booting into Windows 8. So next time we reboot by default it will boot into Windows 7. But for now we want to go into Windows 8. Check your colours and set your PC name up as required. I'm just going to call this one Windows 8 or Win 8. I'm going to accept the Express settings. Now I don't want to sign in with uh, a Microsoft, so I'm going to sign in without a Microsoft account, and then I'm going to select local account. And I'm going to set up a local username and password for logging on this machine. Don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can use a Microsoft sign in if you so wish. click finish. Eventually, there we go, we boot into Windows 8 and we see the front end, formerly known as Metro, but now they've decided not to call it Metro, but there you go. There's Windows 8 for you. And just to prove, it's not all smoke and mirrors, I'll open up the Bing. And should I so wish, I can search from there if I wanted to. UI back up again. That's all very early good. We're not here to look at the bits and bobs of Windows 8. We're here to look at dual boot in. So you remember we set Windows 7 as the default operating system. So if we reboot, and we'll prove it goes into Windows 7 without having broken anything. OK, by default it's on Windows 7. You'll notice that the timer there was ticking down from 30 seconds. I just hit enter to shave a few seconds off. And once I've tapped in a password, this is all successfully logged back into Windows 7. And our machine will dual boot on Windows 7 and Windows 8. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.pignetlife.com.